One minute? All right. Let me know. Let me know. Give me the signal when you go live. Oh, am I live now? Well, thanks, Brother John. You don't have to start. Well, we're going to we'll let him kind of kind of come on in here. I see uh, see our clock back there as it's getting close. Shows enough. Well, good evening and good evening. We hope and pray that this will be a blessing to everybody. Good to see you on the Lord's house tonight and good to have you with us tonight. And uh, we pray it will be a blessing as we've said. And uh, I do pray that, uh, that we'll all, as God's people, as I mentioned this morning, use this as an opportunity to get on our knees and, and seek God's face in this matter. Amen. We do. We do. And I cannot stress that enough. We do need the hand of God in all the situation. Amen. I realize uh, the times in which we live in. I realize the signs of the times as we talk about. And uh, unfortunately, uh, because things are what they are, uh, the one thing that uh, I hear the scientists are talking and such, uh, they're talking about numbers and crunching the numbers and everything. And unfortunately tonight, I was looking at the numbers. So uh, there's been 2,436 as of right now that have died from the coronavirus. And, uh, I do pray tonight for not only uh, the sadness of that situation, but also I pray for their families. And tonight we do need to lift up their families to the Lord in prayer and uh, also those that are sick. But there's also over a hundred and something thousand, uh, nearly nearly 200,000. Uh, it's not quite there, 200,000 yet that have been healed from the coronavirus in this country. Uh, but those are numbers that don't seem to get shared that often. But thank God for that. Uh, God is healing people and touching people's lives and, and things like that, and I thank God for that. And I know God can, and I know God can keep us safe here at Faith Baptist Church. I know he can keep each and every one of us safe, and I pray that he will. And we'll keep trusting God in these matters, amen. Because God has the ultimate say. God's hands is the giver of life, and he is the one that is in control of that, and we thank God for that. Now, in Psalms uh, chapter 140, Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Preserve me from the violent man, which uh, imagine mischief in their heart. Continually are they gathered together for war. And unfortunately, there's a lot of people that are gathered together for war. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent's adder, uh, uh, like a serpent. Adder's poison is under their lips. Selah. Uh, and unfortunately, there's a lot of people that would like nothing no better than uh, for this nation to collapse. Uh, that's why we've heard people like Bill Maher who is a God hater uh, that is out there and saying, boy, he hopes this will happen so that uh, uh, the president will uh, not get reelected. Uh, that, that's just the wrong way to think. It's just a nasty way to think. Uh, that they want people to die. They want people to be hurt. They want people to lose their jobs. They want businesses to go under just so uh, you can get a new president in the White House. That's, that's a wrong way to think. And so we need to pray that God stops that kind of thinking and stops that kind of trash that's going on in our land today and let uh, people come together, let people have a heart, one for another, love one another. And that's what we need more of, amen? We need more love uh, coming to the forefront. Uh, let our hearts uh, be knit together one toward another and let our compassion uh, be what uh, people see and not hatred or, or greediness or anything such as that. Uh, I thank God for the opportunity that we have to show his goodness. And, and, and I tell you, uh, it is important for us to uh, let God's goodness come to the surface. Amen. And so I thank God for that opportunity. Let's go Lord in prayer and ask him to be with us tonight. And then uh, Brother John, he'll lead us in some psalms. Uh, let's, uh, let's pray. Uh, Lord, as we bow before you, as we come to the throne, we thank you for the privilege. Now, Lord, I do ask you to help us, to, to guide us, to direct us. Let us do what we need to do, and that is seek your face. Stay on our knees and lift up our uh, leaders uh, to you. At the same time, praying for those uh, families that are suffering loss tonight. Uh, Lord, uh, there's not one life that has been lost that's not important. They're all valuable. They're all important. And I pray, Lord, that you'll, you'll touch those families and help them as they mourn the loss of. But at the same time, I do rejoice over those that have been healed and those that are going to be healed. And I, I rejoice over the fact knowing that your hand is going to be the, deci the deciding factor in all these matters. I do ask, Lord, my prayer. I heard tonight that the, that, that the president said that they're going to extend the uh, quarantine time, but at the same time, I serve a big God. 
I serve a God of all capability and all possibility. And I'm asking, dear Lord, that you'll take and cause things to stop as far as this virus. And that lives can be changed and souls can be saved. And, Lord, that uh, we all can be back in thy house at Easter. Lord, I know that you can turn this thing around. Because I understand what the scientists are saying. I understand what people crunching the numbers are saying. But in all honesty, dear Lord, they haven't considered you. They haven't thought about you. And Lord, it would be a great time for this world to wake up to the reality that there's still a God that sits on the throne and he is in the business of changing lives. Thank you, dear Lord, for this opportunity. And Lord, let the essence of what Easter stands for, new life, be breathed into the nostrils of this nation. Thank you, dear Lord, for this opportunity. In Christ's name, amen. Come on, Brother John. Amen. You know, as I survey that wondrous cross that our Lord and Savior died on, you know, we look at it and re read about it in the Bible. And as they went up that hill in Golgotha, hey. you know, people in that time were able to actually see what was going on. But yet there were some there that wanted to see him crucified. Yeah. And they didn't understand what they had done. And there's people still today that still do not see so if you would stand with me, please, when I survey the wonders of God. Hey.
division right here. But I tell you what, when I'm looking back here and I see you ladies slapping that old uh, pew in front of you right there, man, that blesses my heart. Uh, y'all having fun tonight or what? Amen. I hope y'all having fun at home too. You know why? We ought to rejoice. Because God still sits on the throne. He's in control of this thing and he can make this thing work out the way he wants it to. Matter of fact, it will work out the way he wants it to. And in the end, we all will be rejoicing. You know why? Because in the end, we'll be with him. And thank God for that. And I am rejoicing tonight over the simple fact is that God's still in control. Amen. Now, we're going to get ready to receive an offering tonight. Uh, I don't know about the bands and all like that. I did uh, hear in the paper that that uh, curfew that was in uh, Tullahoma, and that has been lifted. That curfew that was in Tullahoma. Matter of fact, the uh, mayor said he made a mistake, and I, I appreciate his honesty to come out and say that. And uh, he said he went he, he went beyond what the governor had recommended and everything. And and uh, we, we're glad that he he was honest to say that. Amen. And uh, so I hear tell that the curfew in uh, Tullahoma has been lifted, but uh, we're still, as far as you know, they they talk about the social distancing and things like that. And uh, shaking of hands, and and then uh, how you do that. And then I got news for you. I got allergies right now because it, it, grass is being cut and flowers are being bloomed. Amen. You're going to touch your face. You're going to touch your face. Look, do, get up right here. It's going to happen. Amen. You're going to be touching your face. My nose right now kind of itches because uh, it's just what it is. It, it's it, it's just what it is. We just uh, going to have to live with it. Amen. I know. I, I couldn't help it, sister. I couldn't help it. But anyhow. We just rejoicing over knowing what God is in control of and what God's doing. Amen. Keep trusting him in these things because he is the one that has given us our life. And we thank God for that. And that is the one thing that this world isn't considering right now. At least, at least in, the, in the realm of uh, a lot of politicians, let's say, or in news media. But you and I, you people at home and us here, uh, we're considering God a lot. Amen. I see a lot of people uh, posting live stream videos of church services right now. And I... I like it. I like the fact that uh, a lot of different uh, preachers are preaching out there now. And I like the fact that a lot of people are uh, listening and tuning in. Amen. And that's an important thing. And uh, we're, we're able to get God's word out there. And I'm glad for that. And so I appreciate all that. And uh, thank God for the opportunity. Amen. We're going to get ready to receive an offering tonight. And I know there ain't many of us in here tonight, Danny, but we still got to go through the motions. Amen. So if you'll come and uh, we're going to go through the motions of that. And, uh, and the reason is, is because we still got to keep the lights on and the doors open. Amen. And that's what we got to do. We've got to keep things going. Uh, if, uh, church family, those of you there at the house, remember, we still got missionaries that we got to support and things like that. So if you will, if you'd like to, you could either drop it off here to the church throughout the week, or you could send it into our mailing address. And, uh, it's there on our uh, Facebook page and uh, eventually real soon, Lord willing to be on our website. There's some people, they don't have Facebook and they're not going to get Facebook, but they can tune in to YouTube. So we're going to put it on YouTube. It's also going to be on our uh, website. And so here in the next a very little while, we hope, uh, hopefully we'll be on all these different uh, areas. But let me tell you how many people we're reaching right now. Uh, for those of you at home and everything, you probably don't know this, but we are, uh, we've been reaching the numbers that we see. Now here's the thing, the numbers that we see, we're reaching over 300 per service. Okay, now, adding on to that, there's been several shares. And the numbers we don't know is we don't know how many people those shares and those people that it's touching. So there may be several hundreds uh, uh, that are listening in tonight. We don't know. But whatever it is, we let God handle that. We let God deal with that. And we hope every heart will get touched and get blessed because of that. Amen. And so y'all keep praying and praying for these things. We're going to pray over the offering here tonight. Danny, I know you. you don't want me to call, but Danny, I need you, need you to pray for us tonight. Pray over the offering, and then uh, thank God for the opportunity. All right, go ahead, Brother Danny. Our Father in heaven, Lord, Lord, we know the society and the world tells us that we need to look to the government, we need to look to other things, but we know that you're in charge of all. Yes, Lord. And Lord, we thank you for this opportunity we have to live in this free country where we can look at you through the internet, yes. come and worship you in a building. Just wherever, Lord, so yes. we can worship you freely without prosecution. Thank you, Lord. And, Lord, we also thank you for the opportunity we have to own a Bible and be able to read the Bible yes, without Lord. worrying about the government trying to knock our doors down. Amen, Lord. Lord, we ask you to take this offering. Use it for your glory, your kingdom, 
Let the church be a light, but always let the church be about your business and never about the itself. Make everything be about you. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 John chapter number 14 tonight. John chapter number 14. This is part two of trusting in God. Amen. That's what we're here to do. Let your hearts not be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. We got God's word on that, and I'm here to tell you that's good enough for me. Amen. Trusting the word of God. Learning how to believe in the Word of God. Amen. That will calm the storm. That will calm the fears. That will calm the situation and the circumstance. Why? Because we know God can deliver. He's done it many, many times before, and He's going to do it again. And we thank God for that opportunity. Let's go, Lord, in prayer tonight, and then get on into the message. Lord, I do pray that you'll touch lives. I pray, Lord, that you'll open eyes and hearts. Lord, I pray that people will see and see the importance and the value and the need to trust you. And I pray, Lord, that you will help us not to be troubled during these difficult times. Now, Lord, I pray for those that are home and those that are here. If there's one that is lost, they'll come to know you before it's everlasting too late. We pray thy will be done in all things. In Christ's name, amen. Now, I want to get on into verse number two. 
uh, tonight. I thank God for the opportunity to be with you tonight, and I thank God for the fact that his word is true. Amen. But uh, remember who and what we are. Remember who and what we are. I know a lot of times we think, uh, well, why isn't things going our way? Why are you know, why, why do they hate us? Why do, the, why do they hate us so? Why is it that we have to go through such uh, difficult times? Well, let's remind ourselves of this. We are pilgrims, if you will. Amen. We're strangers in this land. This ain't our world. This ain't our world. This is, the, uh, th this is the, the, the devil's world, if you will. He is the prince and the power of the air. This ain't our world. Matter of fact, if you look with me, verse number two, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If this world was where it's all at, then Jesus would not have left. He would have stayed preparing us a place. But he's not preparing us a place here. He's preparing us a place there. And that's why this world is not our home. When we look at things and everything, look, the Bible says it's a, it is appointed unto men once to die. Dying is a reality of life. Each and every one of us in here have that appointment, if you will. It is our appointment that we will die, but we don't have to die alone. We don't have to die like the world does. We can trust God and believe in his word, amen. And the way that we leave this world is far different than the lost people. Say amen right there. So in the process of this, this is not our world. We are pilgrims, amen. So he goes to be, uh, to be, it's not that I speak in tongues. Sometimes I got to get control of mine, amen. It's not that. It's not that as we live here, it's not important for us to do things and to act and to live and everything. No, but we do need to be reminded that this is not our home. Our home is with the Lord. Amen. That's the fact. Now, Matthew chapter four, verse number one, go there with me. Matthew four, verse number one. A lot of people, uh, they talk about Jesus and, his, and the fact that he created this world and he did. And the fact that uh, uh, all that... Uh, all that he's put before him is power and all, and he has, and every bit of that. But the one thing is a factor, and that is that the devil is the prince of the power of the air. Amen? He is the one that is of this earth, of this world. Now, read with me in Matthew chapter 4, verse number 1. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward a hunger. Now, I want you to understand, Jesus walked this earth in his physical capacity. As in other words, he was fleshly as he walked this earth, amen? And in the process of that, as he walked this earth, he had weaknesses like you and I. The difference is, he did it without sin. He did it without doing wrong. He did it without all that stuff that holds us down and bogs us down called sin, amen? And so Jesus, he hungered. So when he was at his weakest point, Miss Joyce, then all of a sudden the devil comes a knocking. And by the way, the devil will come and knocking at you when you are at your weakest point. He'll come and rock your little world, amen? Read on with me. And when the tempter, that old devil, amen, came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Now what did he do? The first thing he did is he attacked the person of Jesus Christ. If you be the son of God, now here's the deal. A lot of times people try to challenge you and go challenge you about who you are. If you're really a believer then, if you're really a believer then, well, I got news for you. I tell you how to prove that you're a believer. Live it day in and day out. Amen? Live it day in and day out. They're going to come and challenge us in a lot of ways. They're going to say, well, if you're really this or if you're really that, they came at Jesus or the tempter came to Jesus and he said, hey, if you're really the son of God, if you're really uh, the son of God, look, make these stones to be turned into bread. Why? Because he's hungry. He's hungry. He was coming at him in the physicality of what Jesus was. And look what Jesus' answer back to him is. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Amen. Look, your physical can only take you so far. Some of you sitting there at home tonight, you need to remember, your physicality can only do so much. That's why a lot of people that are out there tonight, this virus, it attacks the physical. Amen. That's why the important part here is that we ought to let the spiritual come to the forefront. You know why? Because this old flesh is going to die anyhow. But how we live these days in which we're living in 
It ought to exalt and acknowledge whose we are, and that is God's. Amen. You know why? Because if we will live for the Lord, amen, no matter if we live or we die, like old Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, whether we live or we die, we're going to glorify God no matter what. And when people take that kind of approach, I tell you, it changes things. So the physical is limited, but praise God, we can overcome that physical and that the spiritual come to the forefront, and that's what's really important. That's what's really needed. God says, look, that bread, it, it, it only helps my physicality. But man needs to live by every word of God that proceeds out of his mouth. Amen. And by the way, we need the word of God. That's what's missing today in these uh, press conferences that they're talking about. Hey, I wonder if somebody asked the president today, said, preacher, or said, uh, Mr. President, what about the preachers across this land? Can they have an impact on this virus? Amen. Well, let me give you an answer to that. If the preachers of this land, it's the preachers of this land, would get on their knees. Yes, we can have an impact on this virus. But guess what? Not only the preachers, but also the parishioners of God's house. If we get on our knees, praise God, we can see the hand of God in a mighty way. Amen? Look, we can. Why? Because it's more about the spiritual rather than the physical. Read on. Then the devil, taking him up into the holy city, sent him on the pinnacle of the temple, then the devil, uh, as he's up there, and he saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angel charge concerning thee, and in, the hand, uh, and in his hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against stone. Now, you know what he did? He came at him through the scriptures. And by the way, sometimes that old devil will come at us through the scriptures. Amen? We having problems tonight, Brother Danny? Oh, all right. Boy, I see them things on the side of my eyes that makes me think, well, we're getting, we getting them curveballs so it is. All right. Anyhow, that old devil, he'll do that. He'll come at us and say, well, you know, you know what he likes to do, Miss Joyce? He likes to twist the word of God. Amen. You remember how he got Eve? How many of y'all like to remember how he got Eve? He came at her with the word of God a little bit twisted. Amen. He says, well, you know, God does know. God does know. What was her desire? What did she want to do? She won't be like God. Amen. As in other words, have God's abilities. Well, I got news for you. There's only one God. He sits on the throne tonight. Amen. So here's the deal. The devil played on her desires and turned them around against her. Now he's come at Jesus and he said, hey, if you be the son of God, you know, hey, if you uh, bow down and, or if you throw yourself down, you know, hey, he done gave his angels a charge over you. If thou be the son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, he shall, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up as any time that thou, thou, thou dash thy foot against the stone. He's challenging his word now, amen. And by the way, the old devil does like that. He'll come at the word of God and challenge it. That's why this old book has stood for a long, long time. And it'll stand when all the dust is settled, amen. Thank God for his word. Thank God for his word. Then he says in verse number 7, Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Well, you know what Jesus did? He took it back into the book and nailed it down to him, amen? It is written again. That's where we're at tonight. We need to get back in the book and nail it down, amen? Read on. Verse number 8. And again, the devil taking him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Wow! Boy, if you looked across the landscape... I uh, see posted all the time these beautiful pictures of the land, and it is beautiful. I, I don't know about you, but I like the water. I love the water. I love getting in the water. I like uh, being on the water. Matter of fact, I like fishing. Some of y'all sitting at home, some of y'all might be out on the water right now. Shame on you. Amen. Anyhow, wherever you're at tonight, tuning in, we're glad you are tuning in. But uh, I love the water, and I really do. You know, and it's beautiful out there. And... Uh, what the devil's doing, he's taking up her showing him his creation. Oh, how beautiful. Look at all the glory. Look at all the glory. Look how beautiful it is. He says unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Now he's coming to the fact of what God has already established what he's going to do. And he's challenging him in such a way that he's saying, hey, I'm going to give you a shortcut. I'm going to give you a shortcut. You can have all this stuff out here if you just fall down and worship me. You know what Jesus doesn't do? He doesn't take shortcuts. He's already established in his word 
He's here to give his word what he's going to do. Guess what he's going to do, Miss June? He's going to keep his word. Say amen right there. He don't do shortcuts. What's written, what he's established, that's what he's going to do. So we look to the Lord and what he's doing here tonight. He shows us three different areas he's challenged by the devil. And each time he comes back to the word of God. Amen. He saith unto him, all these things have I given, uh, will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith the Jesus unto him, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him alone shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him. Behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Now, why in the world would the devil offer him something that he doesn't have? Well, maybe because, Miss Joyce, he does have this world. He is the prince and the power of the air, amen. Y'all with me tonight? You see, when we see things bad in the, world, in the world today, we say, oh, God's to be blamed for this and God's to be blamed for that. Let me put it to you this way. If this was the world of the Lord, things would be different. Let me give you something out of the Bible to chew on and to think about. John 18 and verse number 33, go there with me. The Bible says in John 18, verse number 33, then Pilate entered into uh, the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him, art thou the king of the Jews? Here we are again being challenged. Here he is. They're challenging him about who he is. Jesus answered, and say, uh, answered him, sayest thou this thing of thyself or did others tell it thee of me? As in other words, is this your words, uh, Pilate, or has somebody else got in your ear? Huh? Are these your words? He's asking him that question, verse number 35. Pilate answered, am I a Jew? Look, I'm not a Jew. I'm not one of those people. I'm not them. Thine own nation and the chief priest have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Look what Jesus says. Verse 36, Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If you want to know why things are bad, because this kingdom is not of this world. Our time here is short-lived. James says, what is our life but a vapor? We're only here for a little time. Amen. So rather by coronavirus or rather by natural causes, we're only here for a short time. And here's the deal. But we're in eternity forever. So the difference is made with what we do with Jesus. Will we accept him or will we deny him? Will we cling to him or will we turn from him? That's where the difference is made, amen? Hey, what you're going to do with Jesus makes all the difference in the world. I see a lot of people today questioning, well, why ain't God doing this? And why ain't God doing that? Well, remember, this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. Y'all understand this world is not our home? We're pilgrims, if you will. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. He's preparing our place. You say, preacher, how special, how important is that? Well, let me give you a little insight on that. By the way, the truth of the matter is what God is preparing is far greater than anything we have down here. In 1 Corinthians 2, verse number 6, how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world that come to naught. Not the things of this world that come to naught. Not their abilities. We go above and beyond their abilities. Not those things. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. There's some people out there that don't have God, that don't know God. They don't understand this. They don't understand what I'm talking about here tonight. You know why? Because they don't have the Lord. It's a mystery to them. But... To those of us that have the Lord, we understand. Look what he says. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. They didn't know it. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord Jesus. That's in other words, for all those people kept crying out, crucify, crucify, crucify. If they had known that, they would not have done it. Amen. Here's the deal. If the devil had known that crucifying Jesus would have kicked his backside, he would not have crucified Jesus. That's the truth. Amen. 
If he'd known what God was doing, he would have done it. Do you know why? Because he's wanting victory over God. And guess what? He can never have it. Because God's already established. God's already given his word to it. And in the end, God will be the one sitting on the throne, not that old devil. Amen. Here's the deal. If they had known what they were doing, they would not have done it. But guess what? It played into God's hands. Because Jesus died willingly. Read on. He says, now let me get back to where I just lost my place, Brother John. Verse, uh, John 15, verse number 20. Remember the word, uh, remember the word that I, First uh, Corinthians, here we go. Chapter 2, verse number 6. How be able to speak the wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of the world, nor the princes of the world that come to naught, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, here we go, get a hold of this, listen to me very carefully tonight, listen at home. As it is written, I have not seen, I have not seen, read on, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. What God's saying right here is, <laughs> what he's preparing, wow! Y'all with me tonight? I don't know any other way to put it, Danny, but wow! It's an amazing thing what God's preparing, amen? I'm here to tell you, when we get into eternity, it's like the story I tell, brother. And brother Alex, if you're listening uh, tonight, you'll like this, brother. It's like that story I tell about that old man and old woman that died and went to heaven. I'll, I'll take a little note, a uh, little sidestep right here and give this to you. They died and went to heaven, and uh, uh, that old man and everything. He uh, he got there, and as uh, Saint Peter was taking him around, and he showed him his mansion. And as he was uh, looking at the mansion and everything, he said, "Wow, man! Wow! Whoa!" He said, "What's the taxes on a place like this?" Well, St. Peter said, look, look, buddy. He said, this is heaven. There is no taxes. What? No taxes? You sure? There's not some regulations or some fees or something? No, buddy. You're not listening. It's heaven. There's none of that stuff. He said, wow. He said, boy, I really didn't like to play golf when I was on earth. He said, have you looked out your back door? He said, no. He said, well, let's go. Let's go look at your back. He looked out there and he saw the most beautiful, the best well-kept, 18 home golf course he'd ever seen before in his life. Wow, he could, whoa, what's the fees to play on that thing? <laughs> St. Peter started shaking his head again. He said, buddy, you're not getting it. You're not listening. You're not paying attention. This is heaven. There's no fees. There's no dues. There's, no, there's none of that stuff. This ain't man's way here. This is God's way. Hey, that stuff's done. That's over with. You don't have to worry about that stuff no more. That old man turned and looked at his wife and said, you crazy woman. He said, if you hadn't had me eat those bran muffins, we'd been here 10 years, uh, 10 years sooner. Amen. Sure enough. Sure enough. I'm here to tell you, don't worry about the coronavirus. Amen. We got heaven waiting for us. Now, I'm not saying go out there and get crazy with it. I'm not saying go out there and be a fool with it. Amen. Hey, I understand. We're here as long as God wants us here to be a light to this world. Amen. And that's what we're doing. We're not trying to discourage. We don't want anybody to get that. Matter of fact, I told you tonight, we pray for those families. We're going to keep praying for those families. Look, that's difficult to lose any loved one. I understand that. I'm not trying to make light of that. But I want you to understand, we got heaven waiting right there. I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the hearts of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Now, I want to ask the question, do we love him tonight? Amen? Guess what God's got waiting for us? It's beautiful. It's wild. Read on. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit, for the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. As in other words, what we will be seeing, God's spirit will reveal those things to us through his word. Now, it is a wow factor. But, John 15, verse 20. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, if they persecuted me, brothers and sisters, it's not by chance that we're here in this Easter time. 
Let's reflect for a second. Did Jesus do anything wrong to get himself on that cross? No, he did a lot to get himself on the cross. You say, what do you mean, preacher? Well, he stayed down here with man. That got him on the cross. Amen. But he didn't do anything wrong to get him on the cross. He went to the cross willingly, though, for you and I. And while he's hanging on the cross, as you were saying a while ago, Brother John, crucify, crucify, crucify. Boy, that attitude, that hatred, that ungodliness that mankind had, that anger that they had towards the things of God, that hatred. Pilate said, I find no fault in this man. I find no fault in him. If they have persecuted me. If you'll study about the early church brothers and sisters. You'll find out that we've been through a lot of persecutions over the years. And if they can endure what they endured. And if he can endure what he endured. You and I can endure these days in which we live. This is our time. As God is challenging us to rise above and to be the kind of people we're supposed to be, brothers and sisters, right now is our time. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. That ain't no mystery. They persecuted the Lord, did they not? And guess what? They're going to persecute you and I. And so in the process of that, I'm glad... We're pilgrims, we're strangers, but we have a place that God is preparing for us, and I look forward to that day. Now that brings me to verse number three, look at it with me tonight. And if I go to prepare a place for you, and he has, this is what he says, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. You say, preacher, what does that mean? That means we got heaven awaiting. Amen. That means we will be with the Lord for all eternity. Praise God. Amen. Hey, that's the amen section right there. You know why? Because we don't have to worry. Because if I don't wake up in the morning, Miss Joyce, I'll see you on the other side. Amen. Thank God for his promise. We have heaven awaiting. You know, there's a lot of people that don't have what you and I have. But if we have the Lord, we've got it all. If we've got God, we've got it all. Look with me, verse number 18. Look what he says. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you yet a little while. The world seeth me no more, but ye see me. Because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father. And ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments. And keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. As in other words, he will reveal himself to us. That's why we see Jesus far different than the world does. Because he has showed himself to us far different than he did to the world. Amen. We know him differently. Why? Because we have trusted him. We believe in him. We love him. And we have him in our hearts tonight. Now read on with me. Manifest. That means reveal. Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and will come unto him and make our abode with him. Here's the deal. Those of us that have the Lord tonight, we know we got him. You know why? Because Jesus had revealed himself to us through his word and into our hearts. And we thank God for that privilege tonight to have that. Now, John 17, verse number 24. Look what he says. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may be that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. As in other words, Jesus' yearning desire tonight is that we will be with him. 
And I'm here to tell you tonight, we as believers tonight, we ought to long to be with the Lord. Amen. In his time. In his time. Not ours. In his. Read on. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 4. Go there with me. 2 Corinthians 5, verse number 4. Look what he says. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan. That means we have some pains and agonies. Amen. I'm here to tell you, I didn't like the fact the other night I was laying there in bed trying to get used to this mask. I got one of them machines that's going off and everything trying to give oxygen into my face. And I didn't like, I, I laid there and I laid there. You know what Brother John told me? Lay there longer. I won't tell you what my oldest brother told me the, 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 last night. I was talking to him and everything. And he said, well, well, you might have to man up, you know. Amen. Man up. I'm trying. I'm trying to get used to this old mask and everything. But anyhow, and I'm trying to breathe and do all that sort of thing. Now, I don't know where, where I was going with that. I just, I just lost my old, my old train of thought. I went plumb off the rails. God, help me get it back. Amen. Oh, we groan it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I looked at his word, put me right back where I needed to be. We groan. We're in agony. We have pain. Anybody out there have pain? I'm going to tell you, I can't imagine the pain my Lord and Savior went through on my behalf. I can't imagine that. I would imagine every time I th think about having pain, I'm here to tell you, I back off of those thoughts. You know why? Because my Lord and Savior had a lot of pain. He had a lot of pain. You know, let me share with you how much pain he had. When he cried out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? I'm here to tell you, there was never a time in history for all of creation and even before, God and Jesus had never been separated. But for that one moment in time, I guarantee you, it broke the heart of our Lord to know that his dad had to do this right here. Turn his back upon, upon his only begotten son. Amen. Why? For you and me. For you and me. You want to talk about pain? Jesus can tell us about some pain. Amen. Now we talk about a physical man. We talk about Job. Job lost it all. Amen. Job sat there in those sackcloth and ashes. Job, he dealt with some pain. I'm not saying some of you out there don't have pain tonight. I, I, I'm not saying that. I'm not trying to attack what pain. And we're not in the spitting contest here tonight. That's not what we're saying. I'm just saying, man, this born a woman's few days full of trouble. Hey, it's just part of the territory that we're going to walk in. Amen. We're going to have trouble. We're going to have pain. We groan within ourselves. Being burdened. Not for what we would be unclothed, but Clothed upon, the mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now, he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit, meaning he's given us an assurance in our hearts of the Spirit of God. Amen. Read on. Therefore, we are always confident. I like that word. And I am confident, confident tonight that God means his word and keeps his word. Amen. Knowing that. Whilst we're at home in the body, we're absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We're confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. Amen. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me take, huh? Come on now, let me live my voice. Here it's all past home at last ever to rejoice. You see, I want to be with him. I long for my Lord. Amen. Oh, what heaven is. I look forward to that. I rejoice over that. But in the meantime, until then, my heart will go on singing. Amen. Until then, I'll carry on. Until the day. Hey, until then, we need to keep on going. Amen. It's not time to quit. It's not time to throw in the towel. What do we do? John chapter 12, verse number 25. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto, uh, unto life eternal. If a man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. You say, preacher, then what do we need to do? Follow the Lord. Follow, follow, I will follow Jesus anywhere, everywhere. I will follow. Hey, it's time for us to rise up to the challenge 
to the opportunity, to the days in which we live in, and follow the Lord. Do what God would do, and in the process, watch how many lives can be changed and saved in these days in which we're living in. Listen, church, it's time for us to rise up and take the challenge that God's put before us. He set the stage. Coronavirus everywhere. Lives dropping all over the place that they're talking about. All that's got everybody worked up, scared, all that kind of thing. I got news for you. Look to God and let God have his way. If we'll start looking to God, we'll start seeing things differently. If we'll start looking and trusting God, we'll start seeing lives change for his good. Amen. Hey, let God be glorified. If we'll start walking with God, talking the things of God, watch what it might do in lives that are around us. There's a lot of people looking for an answer. They're looking for a cure. Well, I'll tell you the answer. It's the one that sits on the throne. It's the one that gave his life for you. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. There's your answer. It's what God's given to you. Now, if you're willing to accept him, he'll change all, all your life. There's people out there tonight that maybe you're dealing with some drug addictions. Oh, I'm not talking about the street kind. Although that may be your problem too. I realize there's a real big problem with these uh, uh, doctor prescribed prescriptions that a lot of people are hooked on. And it's enslaved us in a lot of different ways. Amen. Y'all with me tonight? They talk about it all the time, Brother John, how that's a real problem in our land. Maybe you're out there tonight, and maybe pornography is what's gotten a hold of you. I don't know. Maybe there's a lot of things that maybe we, don't, we ought not even say or even talk about that might be your problem. I don't know. God knows what your problem is. But at the same time, God has offered you the solution that will change all that. You see, I'm... A firm believer that when God comes into the picture, things change. Amen. When I look across the landscape, Brother Danny, if we would bring him into this circumstance and situation, I'm here to tell you, those hearts of those reporters, they can change. Those politicians, they can change. Those neighbors, they can change. Those co-workers, they can change. Whatever walk of life that they're in, when God comes into the picture, things can change because God's word is true. And what God can do can change mankind. Second Chronicles chapter number 7 verse number 14. That's the formula for revival. But it starts with you and I, brothers and sisters. It starts with us going to our needs, getting right ourselves. You say, preacher, what are you talking about? Well, let's face it. It's real easy for me to talk about everybody else's problems. That's a lot harder for me to deal with my own. I'm reminded of Nehemiah in chapter number one, the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah went to the Lord and his prayer was something other like this. Lord, I've done wrong. I have went contrary to your word. And yes, my forefathers have too. But I haven't done right by you. You know, it's time to stop pointing the finger at everybody else. It's time to start looking at us. I started off last year, and I would use this little phrase right here, and I think it applies tonight, Brother John, as well as it does any time. There's a big problem in our land today, and my question to you is, do you want to be part of the problem, or do you want to be the solution? If we'll rise up to the challenge that God gives to us. We'll be the believers that we say that we are. I'm here to tell you. God will hear from heaven, and he will heal our land. 
We can have church on Easter Sunday and pack this house out if God's people get serious about the things of God. That can happen. I believe that. I tell you, Mr. Joy, I believe it, Miss Irene. I believe that tonight, amen. If we'll get serious with the things of God, we'll start seeing lives changed, souls saved, amen. Hey, a revival break out and a plague stopped. You say, how do you know that, preacher? I've read my Bible. How many of y'all remember that plague that swept across the land when that brazen serpent got lifted up? You know what God's word tells me tonight? As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, if we'll raise up Jesus Christ, <coughs> amen, if we'll raise up Jesus Christ, the Bible says he'll draw all men unto himself. Well, who is its responsibility to raise up Jesus tonight? Us, me. It's my job. It's your job. And if we'll let Jesus come to the forefront, if we'll let Jesus be seen before all mankind, praise God, he can change hearts, save souls, and lives can be changed tonight. But do you believe that? Or we just say that we believe that? You know the best way to show them? With your actions. Show me what you believe. My people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. Hey, God give us the answer. That's him. Now the question is, are we willing to embrace the answer and do right by our God? It's right before us. Amen. Let's go Lord in prayer. I pray, Lord, that you'll speak to the hearts here tonight. I pray for those that are at home. I pray, Lord, that you'll take and use this altar call as only you can. I pray for that lost person there listening Listening, tuning in, I pray, Lord, that you'll uh, convict their hearts and they'll cry out and receive you before it's everlasting too late. I pray for that saved person there at home. I pray, Lord, that they'll go to their knees, seek in your face, and then get off of those knees and get busy for you. Lord, have your will and wait this altar time tonight. In Christ's name, amen. What page, Brother John? Page 270. 270. Gospel on your heart. You come wherever the need is. The altar is open for you tonight. Come on right now. Don't worry about anybody else. Y'all stand. Come on down right now and let God let God have his way. Amen. Come on right now. Come on. Come on. I'll join me. But that I Come on. Amen. Some have started. Others need to. Are we going to let the oldest lady in the house tonight lead the way? Apparently we are. Amen. Come on. Come on. Amen. Come on. There's an altar for you. How about you, young people? Does it matter to you? Do you care? How about you at home? Do you care? It's time to go to our knees. Amen. Time to seek God's face. Amen. Time to do what God wants us to do as a nation come together. Amen. Come on. Come on. They make them big and they make them little. Death don't discriminate. Death don't discriminate. It's a reality that hits us all and it affects us all. Amen. It don't discriminate. By the way, I don't think this virus discriminates either. I think it can hit anybody Amen. But you know what? God don't discriminate neither. That's why he died for the sins of the whole world. He died for the sins of the whole world. And what God would like to see tonight is for this world to turn to him. But for those of us who claim to be believers, right now is our opportunity. How many of us believe we're in the last days? Wouldn't it be good for us to live that way and to show others how serious and how important these times are? No game plan. We're going to sing one more verse, Brother John, this will be it if nobody comes. Appreciate you ladies coming tonight.
Appreciate you praying at home tonight and staying with us tonight. Sing, Brother John. Just as I am. I do appreciate you being here tonight. Appreciate you being there. We're going to be back Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. We'll invite each and every one of you to come out. Now, Wednesday night, we do prophecy. And so we're going to be in Matthew 24 there Wednesday night. And so uh, get prepared on that and be looking forward to that, as I am. But in the meantime, we're going to keep going forward. Uh, we will be here throughout the week as we need to be and keep the doors open as, uh, as we should. And uh, for anybody who'd like to drop off their tithes and offerings, we're, we're here. We're, we're around here and everything. And uh, uh, the important part there is, remember, we still have missionaries on the field. Amen. We still have responsibilities, and we're going to do all we can to keep that going. Amen. And at the same time, we're still out helping people, and we still want to do that too. Amen. And so uh, thank God for the opportunity. See, this is the time for us to rise above our own selves and to reach out to others. Amen. Well, thank God for these opportunities that we have. We need to uh, try to help Miss Priscilla and uh, get those uh, car seats taken care of, as uh, been mentioned there, those baby seats, we're gonna get that working tomorrow. But uh, pray for uh, uh, brother, uh, brother Lonnie. Uh, Miss Linda, she gave me a good report that uh, Lord willing, he'll be able to come home tomorrow. Uh, he wasn't able to come home today. I think they had to do a little therapy and everything today, but uh, Lord willing, he'll get to go home tomorrow, and I pray that he does. But keep praying for him. Pray that God will strengthen him and, uh, and help him through this difficult time. And then uh, I know Miss Linda will be glad to get him back home. Miss Linda, if you're tuning in, we love you, sister, and, and uh, we're looking forward to him getting back home with you. And uh, But y'all keep praying and lifting God up in these matters. Amen. All right. We're going to go, Lord, in prayer. Uh, and uh, young fella, Herbie, I haven't called on you before. Won't you dismiss us in prayer? You do it loud enough so everybody can hear, buddy. Come on. You got, you got this. You got this. You're a big fella. You can do it. Amen.